This guide is for the final exam in optics, modern optics, fall 2020. The exam is going to be an open book exam. Now we need to talk about what that means, but before we do that, let me mention the time frame. We're going to have an exam scheduled on Tuesday at three o'clock and of course, there's always exceptions when we have an online course. Uh, sometimes we have to make an adjustment for someone, so you need to contact me if, if you need that. You need to reserve four hours, and here's why. The exam goes 2.5 hours, but to relieve stress, I want to have a buffer in there for you so that you don't have to like worry about getting done exactly at two and a half hours, and you also have to scan and prepare to submit something online to me by email. So we're gonna say four hours total, which includes the buffer and preparing the exam for email. Uh, this would mean a uh, block in four hours, say from three o'clock to seven. And if there's some conflict, you need to talk to me so we can uh, adjust, it, adjust it for you. But we wanna get it done in one at one time so uh, the exam has to be turned in within that period. Like once when you start, you then have the four hours. Exceptions uh, would be with accessibility. Uh, people that register with the accessibility office uh, have special uh, requirements and we handle those separately. So you would just contact me about that. Now, I wanna make a distinction between an open notes book you know kind of a exam and a take-home exam this exam is not a take-home exam the take-home exams they tend to be more difficult and take longer to do i recall in grad school it was not unusual to maybe spend 10 15 20 hours on the exam and i remember worrying about i had to sleep and some students didn't have to sleep. I figured, wow, uh, I don't have the 20, 30 hours that they might have. Uh, this is not that kind of exam. Uh, this exam is designed to be a two and a half hour exam. So that means the questions have to be shorter. Uh, they can't be very long where it takes hours and hours to write things out. In fact, that's a good guide. If you're writing out lots of stuff and page and a page and a half stop, you're doing it wrong. It does not take that long to do a problem that you have to sit down in class. You know, take an exam for two and a half hours. If you have like eight questions, which is, you know, typical, uh, then each one's not going to take more than like 15, 20 minutes kind of thing. So that's what you want to be looking at. All right. So this is not a take home exam. This is an in class kind of exam. Uh, two and a half hour exam, the UNCA standard for an exam, where we put in the hour and a half as a as a buffer so you can relax and not have to be rushing and worrying about someone come and take your paper from you, uh, like like in the classroom situation. But you do need to get it sent in by that, you know, the four hour uh, time frame. All right, now what does it mean to have an open book exam? Well, when you had the technology we have today, and you have uh, digital, you have all that, basically it means you have access to everything except another person. Uh, this is assumed that you would be taking the exam on your honor without another person helping you, without working with somebody else. But that being said, open book really means open everything. Now you gotta be careful uh, when you answer questions, it does say show all work. So if you were able to find Mathematica to give you an answer, you would get absolutely zero, nothing for that, unless you showed every step along the way how you did the problem, all right? So you just bear that in mind that you really need to show your work. There's gonna be no multiple choice on this exam. Uh, this one's gonna have, I think there's about eight questions. They're either gonna be you know, 10 points, 15 points, or 20 points each, that kind of thing and you want to you know show all your work uh, when you do that so that's basically it now what do you uh, do for preparing for this well one danger is not to prepare saying well if it's open book why well, don't have to study well see that there's a problem with that because there are certain things you need to know and even have memorized so you can be efficient and if you're looking up 
say, had to integrate, say, x squared to get x cubed over 3, you're burning up time that uh, could be spent on the exam. That's why the time constraint is important, especially when you have an open book exam, because uh, it would give an unfair advantage to those that are taking longer. So uh, Snell's Law will be another example. You don't want to be wasting time trying to look up Snell's Law. However, since it is an open book exam, you could prepare a master sheet or two where you have Snell's Law written down. You have every law written down in the course. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fair because it's open notes, open books. You can prepare a set of notes if that makes you feel more calm and more reserved, you know, uh, prepared to take the exam. You can write out all these things. In fact, that's a good thing to do because you're, you're really organizing the material for the entire course in your own fashion, putting down all the equations and the things uh, that you need. So then if you need to consult, look something up, like, like you look it up in like two seconds, like it's right there, see? So I do recommend that to prepare uh, your own uh, study sheet and the way to look at the course. So, you know, that being said, uh, I would uh, look, you know, over the chapters and think about preparing something like that where you can write, you know, you write your equations down and, and how, to, how to use them and look at your homework and all these things are there. And even the longer derivations you want to at least understand the process because it's possible you could be asked to do, you know, go from point A to point B. But since it's open book, we're not likely to pick something exactly from the book and say go from A to B because you'd be able to look that up and just copy it down. So there would be um, creative questions uh, on my part. And I once had a student from UNCA tell me this words of wisdom from a student. Um, must have been two years ago, he says, professors, you have to come up with new ways of making the questions for exams because technology is so good, I could have my, eye, my glasses on and I could be seeing through my glasses everything, like the book and like notes and all that stuff. So you have to make an exam that is creative so that the questions are such that I can't look them up or I just can't, I just can't use that technology to get you know, a quick answer. And that's very good advice. Best advice uh, someone's given me many, many years. And it came from a student majoring in computer science. So, so that is my challenge. Come up with questions that are unique and require you to apply the principles that you know and show me all the steps. And that's the kind of questions that you'll be getting. But remember, they're going to be short. They're not going to be long. So that's my advice for you uh, to prepare for the class. And I wish you uh, the best of luck. And I think this exam is a, a nice experience uh, to have this kind of exam instead of the others. Uh, being a theoretical physicist, I wanna say one thing though. And that is we had a student at UNCA a generation ago where, and this is like back in the late 1980s, early 1990s or something. And the teachers that particular time, I wasn't teaching the majors, but those teaching the majors, they all gave take home tests. And then when that student went to grad school, she was like shocked, like, what is this? I have to sit down and have things memorized and, and like do things without, without looking things up and all that. And she came back and complained and, and told the physics department uh, that uh, like, like, like that, that was a shock. So, uh, when, even if this, if it's an open book exam, you, you should still like memorize your basic things. Like if you're taking a course in French, you would want to memorize your vocabulary and, and not have to look up vocabulary words. So that's like the analogy I can make here. So like Snell's law or say K is two pi over lambda or the speed of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So these are the things I'm talking about. If, you, if you're like looking up all that stuff, uh, you're wasting a lot of time and you, it'll be hurting yourself for further studying in grad school. So uh, with that advice, um, I think you, you can you know, go, go to it and use your creativity to, to work and prepare for the exam. And you're always welcome to email me if you have questions or you wanna discuss anything further. Good luck.